In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. I'd like to welcome you all to our Perseverance family conversation this morning. Always just great to be with you. We always like to start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary is the mother of God. Mary is the mother of the church. Mary is the mother of each and every one of us. We pray that beautiful prayer, the Hail Holy Queen. We call out to Mary as our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So let's start off by praying the prayer that Mary loves most, and that is the Hail Mary. Together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now let's turn to our spiritual director to be with us. And our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has many titles. Among these titles that explain who the Holy Spirit is and his workings in our lives are the following. He's known as the Paraclete. It is also known in the Catechism of the Catholic Church as the Gift of Gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of our souls. He's also known as our counselor. He's also known as our consoler. In the midst of the desolation we sometimes experience. Holy Spirit is also known as the Counselor. He gives us the best advice. And he's also known as the Interior Master or Teacher. St. Paul reminds us that we don't know how to pray as we ought. But good news. The Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans, so we can say, Abba. Abba, which means Daddy or, or Father. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to give us a lot of light, an interior fire of love to burn within our hearts. As we say, Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lady Guadalupe, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So, my friends, uh, 
I would like to, as always, uh, pray for you and for your intentions. And there are many, of course. And I'd like to place your intentions on the altar. That's right. There is no greater prayer than the holy sacrifice of the Mass. When I celebrated my birthday two weeks ago, I had a lot of gifts where Mass is offered for me in various places. Indeed, that those are the greatest gifts, having prayers, but especially Masses offered for myself and my intentions. So I'd like to offer my Mass for you as a secondary intention I'd like to place all of you on the altar so that when I lift up the chalice and the host, I'm lifting you up to God. That God would bless you most abundantly. First of all, for your Lenten journey. That God would bless you with special interior lights in your intellect as well as to touch your will, your heart so that you would know God's will but given the power, the grace to carry out the inspirations that God gives to you in other words, docility to the workings of the Holy Spirit in your lives My second intention would like to pray for your families, for your children, for your teenagers, for your spouses, for your family unit. all aware of the importance of trying to build good, holy families. Family is the, the domestic church and the family is the basic building block of society. So see if you can make an effort to Fortify your family by praying together. Find some time to pray together every day. Perhaps in the evening. To pray the Holy Rosary. Because the family that Raised together, stays together. We want to be united in the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. My last intention will be for the world situation. that there would be world peace and for the people in the Ukraine already close to two million of the, of the Ukrainians have already gotten up leaving their country. That God would bless them especially that God would watch over the children as well as the elderly, those who are the most vulnerable. Let's place them in our prayer intention this day. So my friends, let's move into our conversation today.
Much to cover. Much to cover. Much to cover. So I'd like to start off our conversation with the following. Yesterday's gospel reading, which is the second Sunday of Lent, is the Transfiguration. I'd like to just give you a, a brief reflection on that. That gospel yesterday we accompanied Jesus as he climbed the mountain. But he climbed the mountain with three of his apostles or three of his friends. You might even call these Jesus' three best friends. So let's uh, briefly talk about that friendship. Teresa of Avila says that prayer is basically friendship with Christ. Spending time with the friend that I know loves me. So one note on this idea of friendship with Christ. How do we really show that we love another person? Well, in our the American society often is manifested through, through buying some type of gift for that person, which is fine. You buy some type of gift for that person. Birthday gift. Expending some type of money for that gift, which is, which is fine. But there's another way that we can show our appreciation, our love and our friendship with that, for that person. That would be by simply giving that person time. Giving that person time. When we give someone time, We're saying to that person that you are important. You are so important that I give you this hour of my time. There, my friends, we have one of the key elements of our conversation every day in this Perseverance family that we're forming is we want to give the Lord this hour of time together, which is a sign of true friendship, care, and concern. But then we also would like to give the Lord time. We want to give the Lord time in our busy day. By the time I come to you in the, in the morning, every morning, I've already made my holy hour. I try to give the Lord my best. I try to give the Lord my first fruits. Try to Lord give the Lord the best that I have. Once I've started off the day by giving the Lord a good hour and 15 minutes usually, then I'm ready to start my day in my conversation with you. Another one at nine o'clock in Spanish the other activities that flow, the life of a priest. So we'd, e we'd even call this the hour of power. 
So you want to establish friendship with anyone, a loving relationship with another person. Then you want to make sure that you're giving that person not only money or some material, but commodity, but you're giving that person your time. There is an expression that financial workers are very familiar with, and it's time is money. For us, time is a manifestation of love. So in this juncture of our Lenten journey, which is the beginning stages, if you're not giving the Lord this quality time in prayer, that could be a proposal that you that you make today. That brings me into the whole season of Lent. Step back and ask yourself if you're really living out this Lent to the fullest extent possible. We mentioned before that there are three basic practices that the Church and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offers to us to live out this Lenten season to the fullest. And I've said by that three-dimensional dynamic, which we go up, go in, go out. That's right. Go up, go in, go out. Go up means uh, prayer. And that's the essence of the holy hour that I just mentioned is, is prayer. Give the Lord time in prayer. Go in. That'd be penance. Mortification. Fasting. My friends, one of the best things we could do with respect to prayer, penance, and fasting would be to prepare ourselves to make prepare ourselves to make a good sacramental confession a good sacramental confession decide this lent to give up what is our biggest obstacle in our relationship with God That would be to give up to give up sin. What is the major moral obstacle, the sin that seems to dominate your life? Your major moral kryptonite, you might say. Bring that to the Lord. in confession, and beg for the grace to be able to give that up. Fasting from that. That's a good fasting. Then, go up, go in, go out. Almsgiving. Or the practice of charity. Or active service. What can we do in our lives to manifest charity, love, active service to others? Well, there's always the the perennial danger of us being 
very kind and loving and joyful and charming outside our house. What about, what about at home? You've heard of that saying, charity begins at home. What can we do to show our love and concern for our family members? That can be our charity. And it might be referring to what we said earlier, spending more time with maybe one of your children. Get your teenager off her phone and maybe you can take a walk with her and just ask her how life is going. That could be your your charity, your almsgiving. So remember, up, in, and out. Next point. A lot of things to cover, as always, in our perseverance conversation. And that's the following. This coming Saturday happens to be the feast day, the solemnity of the greatest saint. And this greatest saint is that of Saint Joseph. So we're in the Novena to Saint Joseph. Of all the saints, of all the saints that we can honor and venerate, Saint Joseph, my friends, is by far, he's the greatest of all saints. He's the greatest of all saints. We render to Saint Joseph the cult of what is called protodelia, which would be first in devotion. So this Saturday we celebrate St. Joseph as the husband of Mary, spouse of Mary. And you look in the background of my studio here, you can see there's a, oops, on the other side, there's a picture on my studio wall. And it's a picture of St. Joseph at the carpenter shop. hammering away, and below you can see the little child Jesus picking up a big nail, very symbolic. We're making Navina in our parish in honor of St. Joseph. There are many ways that you can make a Navina. Novena actually means nine. It means nine. Nine consecutive days. Nine. We have decided uh, in our parish to pray the litany of St. Joseph. Very beautiful prayer. You might even decide upon that as a as a practice in your family. Maybe after you pray the rosary at night, then you can um, pray the litany of St. Joseph. It'll take about an, an extra three minutes. So let's honor St. Joseph as we get close to feast day on Saturday. Now, let's move to the readings of the Mass today. The liturgy the Mass offers us
A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel chapter 9, verse 4 to 10. The uh, a summary of this reading of Daniel is the following. Daniel is talking to God and basically is interceding for the Israelite people. He's praying to God. On behalf of the people. And his prayer is a very pertinent prayer that we can and should say in the holy season of Lent. What we have in Daniel, one of the four major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, we have a heartfelt prayer from Daniel of contrition in which he's begging God mercy and forgiveness for the wicked and the evil that the people have done. Now let me just tell you how I try to live this out on, uh, on my own level as a priest. Maybe you're aware of this, but one of the principal obligations of the Catholic priests, two of them would be to pray, to preach, and to do penance, the three P's of the priest. Pray, preach, penitential practices. Now we as priests are called to pray for the people that God has entrusted to us. like Daniel in the first reading. This prayer of Daniel is very, very pertinent for the priesthood. We are called to be priests according to the order of Melchizedek. What I will often do, and I'll do it in my Mass today, is I pray the primary intention of the Mass, which has been asked by someone usually two or three months earlier. But then I'm able, my friends, to offer my own special intentions, as well as your, you can offer your own special intentions also. And these intentions can be limitless. Don't, there's no limit to God's power, love, and mercy. What I do and will do today is I place on the altar in my Mass. Given that I spend, I spend many hours in the confessional, place all the penitents on the altar. And I try to incorporate past, present, and future. Place all the penitents on the altar that I've, I have met in the past as a priest. Then all the penitents that I will meet today and all the penitents that I'll meet in the future.
And my practice is to offer my Mass in my secondary intention in reparation for all the sins of my past penitents, in reparation as well as prevention for future sins. Then for those that I'll meet today, then for the penitence that God will place in my path the rest of my life. So it's a constant prayer in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass of begging for, for pardon and mercy and reparation, past, present, and future. That, my friends, is the way that I live out the first reading of Daniel. God always speaks to us in a different way. But myself as a priest, that's the way that I apply this powerful prayer, this heartfelt prayer of repentance and mercy, contrition of the prophet Daniel for the people of God. And we have the people of God entrusted to us. So I'd like to move from Daniel, my friends, to the responsorial psalm. which is Psalm 79. The antiphon is, Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. Lord, do not deal with us according to our sins. In other words, this this responsorial psalm is a response to the reading of Daniel, in which the psalmist is begging for mercy. Begging for mercy. And that's one of the characteristics of the season of Lent. We're begging for mercy for our world at large for our country, our church, our family, our family members, we're begging for mercy for ourselves because we are sinners. I'd like to move from the responsorial psalm, my friends, to the gospel for the day. The gospel for today, as always, is very rich. And it's taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 6, 36 to 38. Now, once we meditate upon the life of Christ in his public life, which lasted about three years, and Lent, we're heading toward the last stages of the life of Christ, which will culminate in his passion, death, and then resurrection. We call that the Paschal Mystery. We want to sit at the feet of the Master. We want to sit at the feet of the Master and listen to his words. But to listen to his words so that we can put his words into action. Over the past year, I've suggested that you can utilize a, a method when you're doing your meditation.
And that method that you can utilize in your meditation is the following. To read attentively the word of God. Speak, O Lord, for your servant is listening. Second would be to memorize the basic content of the Word of God. Maybe you're not going to be memorizing verbatim, word for word, but the basic content. What is Christ saying? What is the message of Daniel? What is the message in this responsorial psalm? Then what is the general the general meaning, the general meaning of that of that passage. Then the personal meaning. What does it say to me? Then finally, that would be the practical application. How can I, how can I put into practice, how can I put into practice the riches of the Word of God? So that can be helpful. So let's go to the Gospel today. We see hear Jesus preaching. In his public ministry, we see Jesus preaching or working miracles. And also, we see Jesus carrying out exorcisms, casting out demons. So these are the first words of our Lord. He says, be merciful. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. And Jesus says to St. Faustina Kowalska, and this is expressed in the writings of John Paul II, as well as the teachings of St. Thomas Aquinas. That mercy, Spanish misericordia, mercy, my friends, mercy is the greatest attribute of the heart of Christ. And here's a the, one of the Divine Mercy pamphlets. We see St. Faustina mm. pointing to Jesus, who is the King of Mercy. So, let's talk about mercy. Let's talk about mercy. It's after Jesus says, Be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. My friends, in this season of Lent, one of the, one of the major obstacles, one of the major obstacles For us to grow in our spiritual life, one of the major obstacles for us to grow in our spiritual life is the opposite of mercy. And that's why Jesus insists time and time again that we have to live out and practice mercy. So much so that today he says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. He's speaking about God the Father.
It's not always easy to be merciful. But my friends, one of the biggest obstacles in our spiritual life is when someone hurts us, and it happens, it happens often. Someone hurts us. Our fallen nature and our natural response for someone hurting us in word or deed is we want to get even. The Old Testament is called the law of Talion, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. That is our fallen human nature because of original sin If someone hurts us, then we want to we want to get even. We want to seek revenge. That's the natural response. Then, if we do not make any effort whatsoever to forgive that person. And what happens is, is that wound can easily be transformed into the poison of resentment. That's right. Can easily be transformed into the into the poison of resentment. And I like to call it poison. The poison of resentment. One of the analogies I like to give is the following. I think you'll understand it pretty well. Is doctors will tell us that uh, ulcers in our stomach, in our intestinal lining. There are many causes, but one of the principal causes for for ulcers is is acid. This acid that then it can actually perforate our intestinal lining. It can actually cut through or burn through our intestinal lining or our stomach. And that can be very damaging. It possibly also be leading to cancer. So, what acid is to the stomach, resentment is to the soul. That's my analogy. What acid is to the stomach, resentment, moral poison is to the soul. It can wreak havoc within us. So how are we going to confront this, this topic of mercy in our lives? How are we going to live out what Jesus says today? And he says it's a command. It's not something conditional. If I feel like it, he says in the voice of a command, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Well, these are my suggestions. The first is beg for the grace to be merciful. Beg for the grace to be merciful. 
Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. Whoever asks receives. Whoever seeks finds. Whoever knocks the door will be open. And to pray the Our Father with great honesty in sincerity. Because in the context of our Father, we're really begging that we will be merciful as our Heavenly Father is merciful. Because we pray in the Our Father, there are seven petitions. We had the Our Father in one of the Masses last week. We pray. Forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our offenses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's the Our Father. The second step in trying to live out the gospel today, the gospel of mercy, would be when some person offends me, and it's going to happen. And often we offend others, let's be honest. When someone offends me, through the grace of God, and I repeat, through God's powerful grace, we should try to forgive, we should try, we should try to forgive immediately. That's right. The quicker, the quicker we forgive someone that hurts us, the easier it will become. Whereas on the contrary, the longer we put off conversion, the longer we put off mercy, the more difficult it becomes. The reason being is that our heart can become hardened through resentment. become almost like mud. It becomes hard, it becomes caked, becomes difficult to detach yourself from. So forgive immediately. I've never really believed that cliche, forgive and forget. It's not always easy to forget things that happened to us unless we have Alzheimer's, right? But it's not easy to forgive those who hurt us. I'm sorry. We, we have to forgive them, but to forget it, that's not always in our power. But my point is to forgive right away, not to hold on to resentment. That can wreak havoc within our lives. The third point is humility. What you might do is this. This can be very helpful. Find it difficult to forgive. The person that hurt you. And often these wounds happen within the context of our own family. husband, wife, son, daughter, brother, sister, often in the context of the family, the family can be really, I think the Pope has said, 
It can be a school of virtue. We have a lot of opportunity to practice virtue in the context of the family, which is the domestic church. But humility in this sense called to mind possibly your most serious sin that you committed. And God forgave you that sin. God is slow to anger. God is slow to anger, but God is rich in mercy. As the psalmist constantly reminds us, God is slow to anger and rich in mercy. We tend to be slow to mercy and quick to anger. So we want to undergo this transformation of our hearts in the season of Lent. The fourth step in our program of living out the gospel today where Jesus says, be merciful, is the following. Remember, my friends, that mercy is, mercy is a two-way street. That's right. Mercy is a two-way street. Meaning, if I want to be the recipient of mercy from God, I want God to forgive me and to be merciful to me, poor sinner. And that's the prayer of Daniel today, by the way. Daniel is begging for mercy for himself as well as the people, people of God, you're going to see often a connection between the first reading and the gospel in the season of Lent. If I want to receive mercy from God, then I, ha I have to be merciful to others. And I repeat, the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. The Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, what do we say? We say, we say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Two-way street. <clears throat> It's a two-way street. One occasion, with goodwill and enthusiasm, St. Peter Saint Peter goes to the Lord and says, Lord, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive? How many times do I have to forgive my neighbor? As many as seven times. And you remember what Jesus says. I tell you. Not seven times, but I tell you. Seventy times seven. And that does not mean 490. If you've got your mathematical calculator. Jesus is using what is called hyperbole there. What Jesus is saying is, 70 times 7, he's really saying we have to forgive always. If our brother has offended us and he comes back and he begs for mercy, then we have to forgive him 70 times 7 times. 
which means forever. If we want God to be merciful to us, then we have to be merciful to others. The last thing that we we can do to live out the gospel today where Jesus says, be merciful as your heavenly Father is merciful. Is to pray, pray to Mary. And the prayer that we can offer to Mary is that prayer that we pray at the end of the rosary in the Hail Holy Queen. Which we can pray for the person that offended us, we can pray the Hail Holy Queen. Which we pray, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. That's right. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So, my friends, the message today is very clear. We're begging that God will be merciful to, towards us. But that mercy of God towards us, it's a two-way street. We have to be merciful toward our brothers and sisters. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.